I'll be painting today from a reference photograph I took at one of our beautiful state parks here in Florida. I'll be using a 36 by 48 inch canvas and I'll be using oils today but this was primed with acrylics and I used the burnt sienna to get rid of that white on the canvas and you'll see why this was uh, quite important in this particular painting to use the burnt sienna, a nice warm color as a base. I've just used a piece of chalk here to lay in the composition. Now here's the reference photograph I used on this painting and I have it on a 40-inch uh, monitor, television monitor, just to my right so I can easily glance over and see that. Now there's all sorts of ways to approach a painting but typically I like to start with my darks and work towards my lights. Other artists may start with the background and work towards the foreground, but this is basically the way I like to approach it. Darks to lights, no matter whether it's the foreground or the background. And of course that burnt sienna has given me kind of a middle tone to work on top of, so I don't have to work on that white. Here I'm starting to add a little bit of color to those very dark areas. Now here as I start on the road, a lot of that burnt sienna undertone is going to show through the painting. It'll show through on the road, the palm trees. The only place it probably won't show through at all will be the sky. I started with rather thin paint and then as I continue the painting, the paint builds up into thicker and thicker layers. So I start thin and work to thick. Some people refer to that as fat over lean. Since this is oils, I don't want those dark colors of the palm tree to mix with the blue of the sky. So I have intentionally left a little bit of space, a little bit of a gap between those dark palm trees and the sky. I'm going to have to let those two areas dry a while before I can start to bring those palm trees out over the sky. I'm mixing a little bit of Liquin Original with my oil paints and that will uh, speed the drying time quite a bit. Usually by the next day it'll be dry enough where I can work those two areas together. Well, I have my composition where I want it so now my main focus is to get my values and my colors where I want them. Especially the values. The values are usually more important in a painting than the colors. So it's composition, large big areas down first and then colors values. Only then can I start to put in the details, which I can begin now. This is really where the painting begins to slow down. Up until this point, everything is done very quickly. I'm constantly referring to my reference photograph, but I don't take it that seriously where I can't make changes, especially color changes, on the painting. A photograph never really shows the full amount of colors that you can see with your own eye. That's why painting outdoors is always so helpful to me uh, because I can really observe the colors as they are and get so much more out of it. You just can't see the colors in a photograph, especially in the dark areas like you can out on location. Here you can see how toning the canvas with that burnt sienna has really sort of given some life and warmth to this painting, which otherwise wouldn't have been there had the canvas been white. It's really helpful. Even though a lot of that burnt sienna gets covered up, a lot of it will still show through in the final painting. All the colors in the background are less saturated. All the colors in the foreground are more saturated, more color, and they're more vibrant in the foreground. This is what's called atmospheric perspective and will give the painting some depth. I've added this shadow on the road. That wasn't in the uh, reference photograph, but I put it in because Without that, I think that road would have been just too big an area, just too big a shape. So I needed to break that up. And giving that shadow in the foreground gave that road an extra layer of interest. The paint here is dried enough, the underpainting, so I can uh, work on these details and start uh, areas like this palm tree without getting the colors muddy. And I'm working my darks against my lights. It's been a day or two since this uh, blue sky and this uh, base of the palm tree was put in. So now I can begin those details without the uh, green of the palm trees blending over into the blue sky. Anytime I'm outside, I try and observe these palm trees. I'm fascinated by their shape. I uh, try and observe how these leaves bend and how they catch the light. 
Observation is really such a big part of painting. I'm also using a few other reference photographs of palm trees that I've taken in the past just to get an idea of maybe some interesting shapes or some interesting twists of the palms. I'm adding a bit of detail back here, but I want to keep this fairly subtle and soft edged because it's in the background, so I want to keep that area pushed way back in space. Here I'm using a palette knife to add some texture to this road. Then I'm taking a brush and I'm smoothing out a few of those areas with the palette knife because the uh, texture made by the palette knife looks a little bit foreign in comparison with the rest of the strokes made by the paintbrush. Here I'm adding a lot of the negative areas where the sunlight is coming through these trees. I never work on one area very long. I jump around the canvas because I want the entire painting to be at the same point of completion throughout the entire process. This palm tree in the upper right corner is the closest to me, so it will have the sharpest edges, the most intense colors, and the most contrasts between dark and light. I'm using almost pure white here on some of these accents and highlights where the sun reflects off these leaves. A little bit of maybe yellow ochre in that white. And I'm adding a few shadows over the palm fronds that are cast by other palm frond leaves. This process really just continues and continues throughout the painting, building it up a little bit at a time. I hold the brush on its side as I paint, especially with the details. If I were to hold it perpendicular to the canvas, the bristles would dig into the wet oil paint underneath. By holding it on its side, the paint lays down much better and easier without blending with that wet paint underneath. Here you can see where the palm tree closest to me has more intense color and more detail than the palm tree just in back of it. So now this painting is almost complete. It's a matter of just adding a few touches here and there to try and refine it as much as I can. I like to keep a painterly feel to paintings like this, so I don't want to overdo the detail. And I call the painting finished when I basically don't know what else to do with it. Knowing when to quit is important as a few strokes beyond what is really needed can often ruin hours of work in just minutes. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the painting.